YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We got another VTOL for you. Super excited to bring you this one right now. This thing's gonna take off flat, turn vertical, and do all sorts of crazy things. And for now, check out the lights, top and bottom, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Very nice, and we're gonna fly this thing right now without further ado. If you've never seen a VTOL, you're gonna really enjoy this. We have done a number of them over the years, and we're hoping this thing is very good. Make sure you're in M mode or multi-rotor multi -rotor mode. 6G mode is uh, forward flight, and then vertical mode is whoosh, like that. It's crazy, guys. All right, here goes nothing. To arm, there's this button down here that's got a little unlock button. So I'm gonna press that. There we go. Sticks down and out, I'm not sure. Oh, all the way up, all the way down. I think the flashing light tells us we're not armed yet, okay? So this is the first time we've done this one, so we're just gonna try the unlock again. All the way up, all the way down. Nothing there, sticks down, sticks in, sticks to the right, sticks to the left. Okay. We're gonna try something different. This is unusual, guys. I don't normally do this. Power off, power on. Let's see if we reconnect to this thing. Okay, we have some flashing on the red and green here, or red and, red and blue. All the way up, all the way down. There it yeah. goes. Okay, so we should be good to go now. All right, I'm gonna hit the lock button. There it is. Oh, ho, ho. Okay. glad I didn't do that in the living room. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So all the way up, all the way down. I'm gonna unlock. Here we go, there it is, guys. Amazing. Look at this thing, just sitting still. I mean, these things are rock solid. Look at this, I'm gonna just go right to vertical. I'm gonna give it a little bit of real estate. There's vertical. Guys, look, that is so cool, bringing it down with a stick. You don't have to be an expert pilot to fly this thing. We got a little bit of forward, so I'm gonna just give it a little altitude. And I'm gonna lean back just a hair. And look at this thing, is that not the coolest ever? And yes, it will be controllable too, because you can just move the stick and it's effortless, guys. You don't have to be a helicopter pilot. You don't have to be Brian Phillips RC or anything else. You just have to be your normal self. And it's quite easy to fly. Basically, you have three axes of control like every other drone you've ever flown. So show them the sticks as I fly. Forward, backward comes back slower, goes forward faster, rotate to the right, rotate to the left, and then forward and backward brings you up and down and controls your amplitude. Now, just be careful. When you go to 6G mode, that's gonna fly away like an airplane, all right? So I'm gonna go back to multi-rotor, and you see how quick that is. That middle setting will catch you off guard if you're not careful, okay? So let's bring it for some prettier backdrop here. We got this beautiful purple cloud back here. Now watch this, guys. Middle mode, look at that transition. Woo, it takes a second, and then it flies just like any other plane you've ever flown with auto leveling. Beautiful, it does cover a lot of ground, so just kind of show my stick so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just basically got up, down, left, right. It's kind of a fly-by suggestion sort of feel, okay? That's all the way back, it won't flip over. Okay, now I'm gonna show you all the way down. I'm gonna go up a little bit. Here's all the way down, level off and go to vertical, watch this. Little bit shaky-dakey there, but look at that thing. That's because my throttle sticks all the way down, or all the way up, okay? Look at this thing, I'm gonna bring it back over. That is so, so weird and hilarious all at the same time. Now I'm gonna go into multi-rotor mode, all the way through the middle, bring it down. Down is slow, just be aware of it, okay? So we're gonna bring it down. I've just got that stick all the way down. Just waiting for it to come back to planet Earth. And yes, you can fly it around. You've got plenty of spatial control here. It's not gonna be the fastest flying, but look how sweet that is. It's like a little UFO that you can play with. You don't need a lot of skill to fly this. Camera crew, take the, take the sticks. Wait, I'm zoomed in. That's okay. okay. I'm zooming out. The camera crew is flying, as you can see. Okay, here it is, guys. She is flying. Now, I want you to rotate it away from us and go toward the hay pile, okay? Good job, just yaw it until it goes. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna give you a different shot here. Now, I want you to switch to vertical quickly, okay? Switch to vertical, all the way down. Oh, yes! That's now, control that thing. Just lean forward like you were before. That is so cool, hon. Okay, now switch back to multi-rotor all the way. Good job. Okay, I'm back at the helm. See, she didn't crash it at all, that's awesome. 
So now you can fly just like you fly every other quad or drone you've ever flown that has an auto leveling protocol. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm gonna bring it up to altitude. I'm gonna switch to flight mode, just forward flight mode. I'm gonna see how it flies with 6G, 3D 6G off. Got my throttle way down, about 50% throttle, just to see how it does. Doing really good, let's fly into the bull. Sorry, I'm gonna cut in front of you just for a second. Mm -hmm. As you can see, you wanna keep your speed up because the thing is not really designed primarily as a plane, but just to give you an idea, it's pretty easy to control. It definitely does what it wants to do. You give it kind of some suggestions. It's not as bad as some of the, you know, really easy to fly planes we've had in the past. I'm gonna bring an inside pass here. Just remember, respect your limitations in these things because they are computerized controls. Now, right to vertical mode. Remember, it takes a second to get it there, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this back down. And this is so cool. I just love the visual of this. Now, there is supposed to be a function. I think you have to hit the mode button, or what was it? The high-low? There is no. high and low rates. There is a function button, bottom right. Bottom right, okay. So I don't know if, where to do the 3D flip. Is that what it is? Maybe I have to be in multi-rotor mode. I'm gonna go to multi-rotor mode. I love the switch, it's so cool. Okay, so now I'm going to function. I should have read how to do it, dang it. I totally forgot. Because a lot of times, it's supposed to be able to do a 3D flip. Do you remember that? I know it was on the box, but we didn't see it. Well, I, I tell you what, guys, we might do a nature walk for the next part of this because I love flying these things, but to be honest with you, they're just so dang easy to fly. Anybody can do it, but I just wanna warn you about one thing. Look at those sweet, look at the grass moving around. That's so cool. One thing about these multi-rotors is you wanna be careful about your fingers, but I gotta say, this thing has an edge on it because like, if you're not sure, oh yeah, that's so sweet. I just love the fact that you can just jank it from one mode to the next, and it just does it with impunity, folks. That is so cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna get it out of 6G mode. So I'm gonna go into normal flight mode and then it switches. It automatically goes into multi-rotor mode and then it switches to forward flight, okay? So now I wanna see what happens. It's a momentary push button. I'm gonna get a little altitude here. I'm gonna get myself where I'm gonna hopefully not disappear. You're good where you are, camera crew. Okay, here we go, I'm pressing the button. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. It actually flies pretty good, what the heck? I totally didn't expect that. I mean, it's not like AS3X and safe sorta of really good, but it's pretty dang good compared to what we've had on other multi-rotors. Cause I am out of the full computerized control now. And what that means is I have control to roll it over. I'm gonna try to do it now. Here we go, all the way over. It's a little bit slow on the roll axis. Okay, camera crew, I'm gonna come back toward us. You good? Mm -hmm. It's actually not bad at all. This is so sweet. I totally didn't expect that. There is yaw authority and I'm gonna go into a loop. Kind of gets a little <laughs> bit wonk for a minute. And then what happens when I go in out of 3G mode, what happens? It just goes back in, I assume. Yeah, because it's just basically doing its thing like it was before. Now vertical, let's see how vertical is. I assume I'm still in 3D 6G, okay? Oh yeah, it's gotta be 3D 6G. What happens when I shut it off? Oh, there's a change in state of uh -huh. the lights. Did you see that? I can see it from here. I don't know if they'll be able to see it. Okay, look closer. at the two lights on the wings. 6G. There's a green and a red. Off. Oh, so they're this, off. That's so cool. But in vertical mode, it appears to always be on, okay? Now back to manual. Oh, that's gotta be our warning. We gotta be getting low on battery, oh. I bet. Because it's gonna try to get you home, okay? Now I'm just being gentle and nice to it because that thing is sweet, guys. Yeah, yep, you can flashing. see they're flashing. Man, they've thought of everything on this. I love this product, it's so much fun. The W500 from Yu Zhang. We've had now a number of products from Yu Zhang, had really good luck with them. And I gotta say, the complexity that goes into the flight controller on this thing is phenomenal. Now, you know me, I love the skill of flying. I love the art of flying. I love flying through on a night like tonight when it's dead calm. It's kind of killing me getting out here with a Cherokee or a T28 or something that's a you know, beautiful warbird 
or even a Habu or Jet or something like that. I just love it. But when you get one of these products that actually does what it says and it does it well, it's actually worth buying, which is crazy because usually this stuff is pretty much just like a toy and it's a one and done. You fly it a few times and you're sick of it. But I'm gonna tell you this, when you get one that really works, they are so much fun. So guys, we're gonna try to do the 3D roll and we'll be right back, so stay tuned. So oh, we did look into it and it looks like the 3D 6G conversion, it's not like a 3D flip so much as what it is is it allows you to flip over. So we're gonna do another quick flight. We got the battery just to show you how this loads. There's tons of room in here. So you could use different batteries if you want. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and power this off because that's what we did outside the first time we had the power off. It's very unusual. I would not usually recommend plugging in a battery on an aircraft first. It's usually considered to be somewhat dangerous. And you see how my hands are. If this thing would start running, I'm just gonna hold it until the battery dies, okay? That'd be a worst case scenario. But now I've got my hand here, so I'm outside of the prop. Okay, we're gonna drop this on until it snaps in. Snaps in. Now I can put this in a safe spot. I'm gonna go ahead and power on my transmitter and I'm not gonna unlock it. Do you guys see this? The way you arm it is up and then down, okay? So we're good, I got a hand on it just to be safe. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take it. We're gonna take it out there and launch it real quick. We'll do a quick nature walk. You don't need to pause, just get the door for me. Okay. We have the cats, like evidently very interested in cats this. Cats are gonna come with us, apparently. <sighs> That's what I was hoping they wouldn't. Okay, so we're gonna take off right here. And hopefully we can go right here. And we're just gonna take off right now. So here we go. So first things first, unlock. There it is, guys. As you can see, we're now flying. We're gonna shoot the moon real quick. So cool into vertical mode. What a sweet thing, guys. Look at this. Can you, can you get enough of something like that? That is so cool. Oh, and just so you know, like this is where, this is where our pond is gonna be, right where I'm flying right now. Okay, I'm gonna switch to multi-rotor mode. This is where the pond is gonna be, okay? I'm gonna be right on the shore and this will be where the dam is. It'll be on our side. Just to give you an idea of just how easy this thing is, let's fly through. Let's fly through this little opening here, okay? As you can see, it goes through no problem. This is very, very easy stuff, guys. Look at this. I'm through to the other side now. And now I'm just gonna go up, pull back on the stick lightly. And as you can see, <laughs> you, can, you can get going fast enough with this thing where it'll do stuff like that but the flight controller takes right back over. Now, let's go vertical. There's vertical, that is so sweet. But I gotta say, coming back to Earth is one of the hardest parts in this mode, okay? So I'm gonna show you a trick. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna point it this way. I'm gonna go to forward flight mode. It's gonna switch to multi-rotor and then it's gonna fly, okay? As you can see, I'll get it up against these gray clouds so we can see it a little better. I'm gonna just bring it down. It's easier to bring it down in this mode, guys, you see? Look at this, that is so much fun. I'm gonna go right next to us, you good? Mm -hmm. Stay right where you are. Beautiful, okay? Now I'm gonna just bring it up and over and you can see the solid lights now. If you wanna turn off this 3D 6G, it's got a big red button on your transmitter, okay? So if you wanna do that, it's gonna fly more like stabilized, okay? Pressing it now, now I can control it and I can flip it upside down. That's what they meant by 3D. And watch, even still, I can slow this sucker down and I can go straight into vertical. And guess what? Now it's all computerized again, okay? So you're not gonna lose control. So cool, well thought out, very neat project. Let's go over the water real quick. Whoa, there you go. I wonder if it's meaning to do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring it toward us. Now you can also bring it this way. It's slower this direction, just so you know. Okay, see that's like almost all the way back on the stick and it's barely moving toward us, okay? And then it's a little bit faster this direction. So I'm gonna bring it close. I'm gonna go over the pool. The pool, we're about to shut the pool down for the year, guys. Look at this. That's so cool. I want you to see the water. Should we do a tail dip? Oh, yes. Oh, it's in the water. Just a little teeny bit. Did we get it? I think so. That is so much fun, guys. Okay, so that being said, now let's say you have to land it here because you live like on a patio. Camera crew's gonna go back. I'm gonna go to multi-rotor mode by just flipping to the top. 
And we're just gonna fly this thing right back to us. Camera crew is gonna go over by the grill probably. Okay. Thank you. And you're gonna stay back, go all the way to the grill. Okay, I'm gonna try to get it so you guys can see good. I'll just bring this thing backward. I could actually, eh, I don't know. This is probably actually a bigger opening. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Now you can go back by the table, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep the camera crew safe by the table over there. Oh, you're landing? Yeah, I'm gonna land table? right in the middle of the table here or in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the space. So guys, this thing is super, super easy to fly. I'm barely doing anything, guys. The only thing you gotta watch out for is wind. And then if you have something crazy, like a cat that jumps out, okay? As you can see, it's really, 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 really easy to fly and then just hold the stick down and hold it for a minute and it shuts off, okay? That's all you have to do. It's very easy to fly. Now, one thing I need to warn you about, and I'll come out here so we don't have exposure issues. When you get these multi-rotors, you need to be a little bit careful about taking off in a closed space. Uh, we have used these before, but this one has a tendency to want to jump a little bit. Okay, once you give it throttle, okay, it's not gonna take off, watch this. See, we're pretty much locked until I hit this button again. This button says unlock, okay? So if we wanted to take off again, we would just hit unlock. So for instance, I'm gonna show you the hop I'm talking about. This hop is something you need to be aware could happen to you. And so if you do take off in your living room or something, just be careful. Okay, so pressing the button. See that? That hop is something you need to be aware of, okay? So once you start flying, you're golden, okay? So it's very easy to control. I'm not having to do hardly anything to control this thing. And it's so robust in its vertical flight that you just have no problem switching, which is really cool. And it doesn't lose any altitude, but at the same time, it will gain a small amount of altitude when you go and try to unlock it for the second time or the third time or the fourth time, okay? So as you can see, we'll bring it down here to the picnic table where the air is allowed to pass right through it. Once it shuts off, you should be safe to go. Now we'll take off and do one landing down there on the trampoline because this is super fun. Okay, as you can see, the hop as we expected, we'll bring it down here. You think I can get it? Of course I can get it. I hope so. Right on the trampoline, okay. There it is. You see how slick it is? <laughs> yeah. It's gotta be slick. That is so much fun. Okay, so unlock, give it a little bit of throttle, get that stick about 50%, you're ready to rock and roll. Oh man, if I could fly through that, that'd be so sweet. Through the geodesic dome, you think I can do it? Mm. Should we crash it for the audience? It depends on how good your death perception is. Yeah, I can do it. Okay, we're gonna go through the geodesic dome. Now guys, that is, that is actually a uh, like a sit and ride on thing. Okay, just keeping it really low so I don't lose my props. Oh yes! We made it through the geodesic dome! <laughs> so much fun, guys. These things are so easy to fly. And I'm gonna tell you, now, if you don't have much experience flying helicopters or flying quads or VTOLs, don't worry about it. You don't need a lot of experience to make this thing happen. But I gotta warn you, the one thing you do get with this that you don't get with airplanes is close proximity to your hands and face. So please do be careful. Don't get cut because it is tempting to bring them closer than you ought because they're so dang easy to control. And I gotta say, I just cannot believe how dang good this is and just how easy it is to drop this from horizontal mode to vertical mode. That is so sweet. Okay, right back. I mean, I gotta love it. All right, guys, if you have questions or comments or you want to help support our channel, stay tuned. We're going to unbox this thing, give you all the details as they unfold straight from the package. Camera crew is going to move back by where the cat is, and I'm going to do another landing right on the table before we close this thing out. If you want to help support us, buy this thing from the link. You need it. It's so much fun. You will have a blast with it. In fact, I'll just, uh, yeah, the table's more cool, isn't it? Than yeah. landing it on by yeah. your feet. Oh, and then by the way, Sticks down and wait. If it doesn't stop. Okay, so I hear it's kind of thinking about something and I don't know why. Okay, I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute. Hold the lock and the red button. Okay, it didn't do anything. So basically my stick's all the way down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off here See, there it goes. So it's awake. That's the first time it's done that. 
Bring it in here. Sticks down. Huh, very weird. Okay, let's try the ground. Watch your feet. Mm -hmm. Give me a space to, to land. See, now I've, now I've got it in this mode. Sticks down all the way. And when I press unlock, it flashes. There it goes. So I pressed and hold unlock that time. And that eventually did stop the process of flight. Okay, so this is the biggest thing I got to say. Because there's not very many safety factors you need to worry about other than hitting your face, your friend's face, your hands, your friend's hands, your cat, your dog, your neighbor, your plant, your wife's cabinets, the lamp. Other than those things, this thing has totally got a perfect safety record. Okay, now I, I'm curious, can we land it on the island real quick? Can we just slide through the door? Let's do it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> good idea. Okay, I'm gonna take off. Good idea. So go ahead, do your thing. So now the cat's like reluctant to come out here. Watch out, cat. Okay, you good? Yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna fly this into the house. Of course we need to fly it in the house. And the thing is, I know what people wanna see. They wanna see it underneath that fan, okay? So we're gonna fly it underneath the fan here. As you can see, the turbulent air definitely gives it a run for its money. I, can I switch to vertical? Your fan. There's vertical, guys, okay? So as you can see, it flies just fine in here. Now back to multi-rotor. And as you can see, it's just fine. It does it all, it does it with some level of impunity, but it likes to jump to life. And then your stick is expected to be in the center, okay? Because down is down and up is up, okay? But center is neutral, all right? So I'm gonna land here by just getting it on the table or the counter. Wait for everything to stop and you're settled, okay? So, so much fun. I love these products about the only thing I don't like about this product right now is the fact that we tried to put it down on the table and it didn't shut itself off. But in a condition like that, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna press and hold this unlock button, okay? So that's also incidentally how you start it. So the VTOL W500 vertical flight, vertical takeoff, this thing is so much fun. It comes completely ready to fly with the exception of the batteries for your transmitter, which in our case were four double A's. It does come with a stock charger. The stock charger is pretty lame compared to the ones that we use, but it's definitely gonna get the job done. Let's just demonstrate with our battery tester. This does not come with the helicopter quad thing. Okay, so 98%. So we actually flew from about 97% having charged them quick here and not allowing for a 100% balance. But ours came with three batteries. And then also if you decide to use this on your charger, make sure you're gonna have to have some adapters to get you down to an XT30, which I have built uh, for my use. So just keep that in mind. More details in the unbox to come, but guys, this thing is super fun from Yu Zhang. We've had Yu Zhang has put out a couple of really good products. There may be the third or fourth to the party, but we don't have a problem with that so long as they do a good job. Sometimes, and we have found this over the years, we have had the third or fourth to the party has decided to add some features that undermine the performance of products, okay? So just to be clear, this thing has been very good so far. And like I said, the only concern we have is that little bit of a hop, skip and jump. So like in our environment, we might hit this lamp. So we would have to make sure that we have room. Should we demonstrate real quick? because I don't know if people are gonna connect the dots if we don't just straight up show it. Okay, so let's just straight up show it, guys. This thing's gonna go up in the air, right? Okay, so unlock. Okay. I wonder if your battery's low because oh, your lights flashing. were flashing before. Okay, so we can't actually launch it without switching batteries. So let's just switch batteries one more time. Let's demonstrate. I wanna show the people. They need to learn stuff on Brian Phillips RC. But also, if your wife is not me, you might not wanna do this in your kitchen. This is like literally dangerous territory and not because <laughs> like of the maybe. danger posed from the device. <laughs> right. Okay, so we have another battery. I hope I grabbed the one that was charged. I didn't number them, so I can't really see. Okay, I'm just gonna drop it in there whatever direction it fits. Remember, you gotta turn off your transmitter. I'm just gonna hold this until everything settles. Okay, nothing has moved. So I'm pretty safe there. And also they have a couple of routes here so you can pass different things out of the canopy. Okay. Okay, so snap that down. Now, my transmitter has not been turned off this time. And camera crew, if you want to stay back, throttle up. 
Nothing, throttle down. Trying the unlock. Nothing, nothing. Okay, in order to get this to work, you have to turn this off and then turn it back on, which I don't like, but it's okay. So it's on, it's flashing all the way up, all the way down. It's armed, you can see, because these things go to armed position and the lights go solid. Now watch, it's gonna jump up, just be aware, okay? We're in, we're in M mode for multi-rotor mode, which will keep it flat, and I'm gonna hit the unlock and watch this. Okay. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't start yet, so we'll try again. Okay, it still didn't start, so hold on, I'm gonna go throttle up a little bit. I'm gonna try again. Nothing there, I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm going to, nothing changed. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. Power off. Okay, we've got this off, that's a bad thing to do. You can see it's gone out of connection. Okay, powering back on. It's gonna require up and then down. Now it's connected. Now I'm gonna press unlock. There we go, sticks at the middle. You see how high it went? Now I'm flying and I have no problems. I have full control over this now. But remember that first initial hop is what's gonna get you. Okay, so it sticks down. You gotta get on the middle. Wait till everything comes to a full standstill and then you should be safe to go. Okay, so what have we learned about this transmitter and this VTOL? A couple things to keep in mind. A, get as many batteries as you can with it. B, if you need to stop it, you can press and hold the unlock lock button for a period of time. It takes a few seconds. I don't like that feature. I would like an immediate kill switch. This switches from 3D to 6G. Seems to me that a red button should be more of an emergency button. And I think that button does the same thing as this button, if you ask me. But I don't know that for a fact, okay? Also, I like the fact that there's room in here for a battery. You see how my hand is. Keep your hands safe, guys. These things on my arms are from Poison Ivy. I get, I get into weeds. We have 24 acres here and I've been working a fence line. So this is what you're seeing. I did not get attacked or mauled by this machine recently <laughs> or yet, okay? Just to be clear. I like that they come with three batteries in my case. I don't like the fact that we have to turn this on and off a couple of times. That's a little bit weird. It's a little bit disconcerting, especially if you're brand new to the hobby. Okay, this thing is totally safe now. Remember, Expect these things to jump to life at any time unexpectedly, unless this thing is on, sticks down, and even, even if it were to go, you're not gonna get cut, okay? You need to be careful to do that. Also, if you have things like this, or you have a seven foot ceiling, put it on the ground, you should have plenty of room to get off and uh, kind of start your flight. But that being said, I think it makes better sense to just take off outside. It's gonna make, yeah. make good sense. If you have a gymnasium or something like that, you're totally mm -hmm. fine. Got tons of room. This thing does good, even with that wind, from that fan, that's an 84 inch fan. It's very strong, it moves a lot of air, okay? So when we introduce air currents in here, it's because we're filming in a thought. So that being said, awesome product, really fun, two thumbs up. Um, I definitely gotta say, we have done something like this before, three times now, we've been ultimately impressed, all three times. I'm not gonna sit here and say that this thing is like so much better than the other two we've done, but I have to say this thing is better than a lot of the ready to fly stuff you get. Um, these are three brushless motors. It's held up to um, no abuse yet. And that's where you gotta watch out for. Where these things will fail, and this is where Brian Phillips comes different from the other channels, and I'm gonna tell you where they'll fail. This little servo, that little servo will fail before anything else. This little servo or this little servo will fail before anything else. So just remember they're small servos. They're a little bit hard to get if you're not looking for the right thing. So if you have any doubt and you know you're gonna fly the wings off of this thing, just remember, look for those parts while you're running, okay? Not when you're broken, okay? Now, big disadvantage of this, the lights are maybe not as directional. I would like those to be a little bit easier to see. Not a big deal, I can put up with that. We still have the lights. Also seeing the condition of light change from flashing to solid, it's super nice. Also having the automatic switch to multi-rotor mode when the battery goes to low, super good. They've thought of almost everything with the exception of whatever the little binding issue is at the beginning. 
but we are always able to restore it to operation by power cycling the transmitter. If you're in that same situation, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. If you guys know what I did wrong, put it in the comments below. We always love to learn from our audience if you have maybe run into a similar circumstance. And then we can, of course, have all those details down in the comments below. And if you guys have a question and you're not sure and you may be a little bit too timid to ask it, read the comments. A lot of times the comments have a lot of answers and we have some videos that have been out for many years. A lot of people have made good quality comments that help us to answer. And then you can see what their question and answer already is, mm -hmm. which is really handy. All right, guys, I think we've beat the dead horse on this one because this is an awesome product and we really enjoy reviewing awesome products. Believe it or not, not every product we get is awesome, but I am kind of a sucker for RC in general. By the way, I gotta say, look, one screw loose. Look at that. Oh. We gotta tighten a screw. See, you guys are saying my screws are loose. You weren't kidding, were you? I don't even know. Is, maybe it isn't loose, let's see. Uh, looks like a Phillips, and yes, that is loose. Holy cow. Glad I caught that, guys. Thanks for pointing that out to me, camera crew. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, all right, guys. Is there anything else I've missed on this product? Because I know we've done it a couple of times, but I really get a kick out of these They're things. super fun. They are really fun. And the fact that it actually flies in forward flight mode out of 6G and it flies decent. Guys, we got a lot of these little mini warbirds like this. Our kids love to fly them. I actually like them more than I do. But the thing is, when you shut off 6G, 3D, 6G, a lot of times they get wonk is all get out and they just don't fly very well. This thing actually flew pretty dang good out of the auto leveling. I was surprised by that. Mm -hmm. And there is still stabilization as you're flying out of that mode. So I think we've answered all the different questions that I believe people are gonna ask with the exception of what about FPV? FPV stuff can be plugged in under here. There's an accessible cover. You can take this cover off. They have a big pass through for the antenna. So you can actually take that cover off and wire your goodies in there if you choose to do that. And then they also have this little mount here, okay? So again, I don't really do FPV because I can't show it on the channel with regard to, you know, part 107s and different things like that. I don't wanna get into all the details, but the truth is FPV is maybe not my favorite thing, but I know a lot of you guys love that stuff. So this would be a cool platform for that. And honestly, FPV in any of these planes is really fun if you're into that sort of thing. I have a really hard time with depth perception on FPV. So without having some sort of a, you know, like a horizon line um, or an altimeter that's gonna tell me how much altitude I really have. And I'm talking barometrically controlled so I can really tell when I'm getting ready to touch down. I just have a really hard time landing because I can't see. And I love the third person perspective. That's what I've always loved in RC, which is funny because some of you guys love the first person viewpoint of being a pilot in the airplane or in the VTOL or in the helicopter. It's just not my cup of tea. So nothing personal. I don't mean to disparage anybody who loves it, but it's definitely not my thing. So guys, if you wanna get this ready to fly, it comes out of the box with everything but the four double A's and you should check it out in the link of the video description below. Yu Zhang, good job, we've been impressed. I think this is like what, the third or fourth product we've done for mm -hmm. Yu Zhang. And like I said, third or fourth time to the party and we haven't lost or skipped a beat, which is really nice. So check it out guys. Any other questions or comments, leave it in the comments below, buy one for yourself. And then also don't forget Patreon, PayPal for one-time donations, Patreon for monthly, and also gives you access to comments a little easier. And then we have YouTube membership and super thanks is the other way if you wanna support us in those ways. All right, guys, that's all you got. Thanks for watching. We'll do the unbox next. YouTube, it's Brand Phillips. We would normally open a box, but this one just came in a box like this. Oh yeah. So we're gonna open this thing up. We have done a couple of VTOLs over the years and they are super cool. And so we're hoping this thing is just as fun as what we have had in the past. This is a Yu Zhang. We've done a couple of Yu Zhang helicopters, had pretty good luck. And I believe that one over there is a Yu Zhang. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is the other one a Yu Zhang? Both of them. But they are both beautiful mm -hmm. underneath the F7F. And so we're gonna open this right now and see if it really does the 360 degree flip, altitude control, gyro, 2.4 gigahertz and house. And it house. comes with a house. You can live in it. That is a lie, it doesn't come with a house. 
Um, okay, so real quick, we'll dump out all the contents of the package. As you can see, that's everything. And if you could just read the uh, that and tell me what it says. It says instruction manual. Okay, so we can just put this over here. All right, so first things first, we gotta get the battery charging. Okay, it comes with a little charger like this. It looks like a 2S. Whoa, buddy! This came with three batteries. Holy oh, cow. Cool. Now, typically with the Yuzhang and other helis, there are choices, okay? Yes. This is an XT30 connector. This is the balance lead, 3S. And it's hard to read because they're black. I'm assuming this is probably about a thousand milliamp hour. Vertical stabilizers, okay? We're supposed to be charging the batteries. Oh, supposed to be charging the batteries. So that's what we're gonna talk about next. This is the charger that comes with it. So in order to charge that, you're gonna have to basically provide your own USB adapter like this, okay? This one puts out, looks like the output is 11.1 .1 volts at two amps. Okay, so that's two amps, good Lord. That's pretty fast, so it's a 2S charge rate, or two times charge rate, okay? Oh, so before we charge, we always put them into a battery tester, something like this XBC battery checker. Trying to hold this out of the glare, hun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll plug this in over here and you can see what type of voltage. So 3.94, a little bit more than what we're used to seeing. And then we'll go ahead and plug it in. We got a flashing light, plug this into the balance lead, and then it's gonna do its magic. Now, just to give you an idea, uh, looks like 3.97, about 72%. So you could actually fly on that for a minute, but you'd like to see those fully charged before you go to town. So if you've got a smart charger and you wanna do, we always push this S2200 because I feel like it's a good value. It's 200 watts and it's two channels. So you can do EC5 and then IC, uh, excuse me, EC, excuse me, IC5 or EC5 or IC3 or EC3. You've got the balance leads and then I have built a million adapters that look like these things. Actually, I didn't build those ones, but we've had other batteries that have these XT30 adapters on them. And so usually what I do is I find the adapter in my bag of adapters. Okay, so if you don't have something like this, which would be an EC3 to an XT60, this happens to be black, okay? I've built one that's a parallel charger so I can charge more than one, okay, at the same time. And so the way that would work is you would plug in your balance board that would look something like this if you so choose to use something like this. I'm not gonna use that today, uh, but you can actually use those provided the batteries are in similar condition and similar discharge status, okay? So I'm gonna plug into here it's gonna say battery detected. See how it says no battery detected? Now it says 11.8. Now I can plug it in and this just becomes a normal dumb battery. See 3.9 volts, press and hold start. Go up and change your amps. Since I don't know the exact size, I'm gonna go with the same as what the provided charger was, which was two amps. I'm gonna set it and then I'm gonna go down to start and then it's gonna start charging. Now once that's going, you can actually look at the balance and then you can go in here and see the internal resistance if you want. Of course, I don't worry about that too much. Channel two is gonna be hooked up. I'll show you, I have a single one here that I could use. Or in my case, if you ever use something like this, this happens to be going to an XT30. So of course, in that time, by the time I actually plug that in, I have to go to another adapter. And this is just one of those things that you have uh, when you do a lot of these airplanes is you have adapters that go to another adapter and then eventually all of your adapters end up at the right end. Okay, so two different styles of adapters for XT60. You see this? Now just be careful when you plug this sort of thing in, you wanna make sure you don't short your battery. Now look at this, this is just a, from a motor, from one of those uh, brushless motors, okay? So you see this? This is where you gotta be a little bit careful if you try to do it this way. Just make sure you don't accidentally bump it out, okay? And so what you'll do is you will probably go ahead and plug in your balance lead and the balance lead is gonna go in there. And then basically this one will go into here and you'll just do this very carefully so you don't yank out your leads. And accidentally cause a short, okay? So now that that's plugged in, that's your other way you can do it. 
And camera crew's trying to get this, but the lighting is really rough with the uh, sunset. Okay, so now this one, the last time we used it was at 3.2 amps. A little bit too quick for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go to two amps and start. So the rule of thumb, if you get a battery, is you wanna charge at about, let's call it one C, if you wanna be nice to it, okay? So like, um, here, let me use this example. This would be a good example. This is a Gen 1 Smart Pack. It's a 3200 3S, so 11.1 volts, okay? And that's three cells that are in series. That's what the S stands for. And it's three cells you can tell because there's four wires. So it goes one circuit is in series with the second circuit, which is in series with the third circuit. And then this and this, these are common to the big discharge leads, okay? And so the same would be true for these small batteries, but they just come in a little bit smaller package. So you can see that the capacity is the big number here, the 3200. And since this is a 3S 3200, we could conclude this is about maybe one half. So maybe this is 1200 milliamp hours. Maybe it's 1100, maybe it's 1300, maybe it's 1500. Really doesn't matter. My guess is it's probably somewhere between 1000 and 2000 because the charger that was provided with it charges at two amps, which is pretty speedy, okay? So you can see right there, it says 11.1 .1 volts at two amps, right? So when I go and use my normal charger that I would normally use every day on a day-to-day -day basis, even though this smart battery uses a data lead to communicate its status, what setup it has, what its serial number, what firmware it's got, all that good stuff. You just plug it in and it goes. Or in this case, you plug in the balance lead and the discharge lead and it will charge for you. Automatically sets itself up. Now this being a Gen 2 gives you the added benefit of just having one wire instead of two. Now, benefit or drawback, depending on if you're trying to use one of these fancy little voltage alarms. Voltage alarms are an invaluable tool for non-smart devices that you wanna keep track of, okay? So there you go. So you see how it says negative, 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S, 7S, 8S plus, okay? So there you go, there's your 12.6 volts. 4.18, 4.21, and 4.19. Now I wouldn't trust the readings on this as much as I would trust the readings from the smart chip that is inside of this part of the battery, which might get kind of warm while it's automatically balancing itself. But just the other day we did a video where we were flying this in our new Viper. Pretty cool stuff. But anyway, that's the smart technology. When you don't have that technology, you're left with something like this where you have to maybe know a little bit better so that you can set it up. And this is a tool that everybody should have in their tool bag, the XBC battery checker. Now, do we have this thing in our tools and supplies? It's on the Spectrum Smart stuff, but I can put it just on the regular yeah, supplies we'll list. we'll probably link it on there. Yep. Now, that being said, so these are all gonna charge, and so there's nothing wrong with, you know, using your battery charger or using the provided charger. Just don't use this charger expecting it to work as fast or as simple as you might with an, one of the smart batteries. Okay, so like this is a smart battery that'd be a similar size configuration. And as you can see, that's a 1300 milliamp, but there is a little bit of extra circuit here. Okay, and this one's been around for a little longer because you can see it's a little bit puffed up. Now, the more rounded that gets, the worse the condition of the pack would be. And so I've probably driven that into the ground quite a few times. And then also, if you're new to the hobby, just pay attention to shapes like this. It's a different chemistry, okay? So it's got those rounded cells in there. So this would be a NICAD. This is lithium ion compared to lithium polymer, okay? So lithium polymer has those cells that are kind of like long, you know, of course you don't know what they look like. Here's one with clear. There's one, two, and three cells, very similar. This is a predator pack. Uh, which is like an FMS offering sort of thing, okay? So just so you guys can see, there's lots of different batteries out there and understanding how to operate the battery safely is the best way to stay safe in this hobby, uh, second to none to only the props. Okay, so we'll pick up where we left off. So the next thing obviously is we gotta pull out the helicopter, quad, VTOL, whatever you wanna call this thing. Plug like this. 
comes out like this. Three brushless motors. Very cool, there should be some lights here and here. Do we have lights on the bottom? Yes, we do. That's a little bit on the uh, hmm, interesting side. Plastic doesn't quite match, but who cares? Because you're not gonna care once you get this thing in the air. Very small servos, be careful those things are not very strong. And all they do is they act as an elevator and aileron, so it's a telephone configuration when you're in forward flight. These things will actually actuate like that and pull the plane along and act as a plane. Or it will take off like this, okay? So that's what these things are for. And I'm gonna make it so that they stick out, outboard. There's kind of a snap that we should hear. Yep, there's the snap. Okay, same thing here, there's actually two. I only heard one snap. I feel like we should have heard two snaps. Don't you? No, that one just went in. The other one snapped quite a bit. Mm -hmm. that was there we go. I hope it wasn't because I broke it. That'd be annoying. But anyway, okay, so the way this thing works is you juice it up. I wanna show you the bottom again. Okay, skid, 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 skid. Four contact points. And then look at that. You can actually mount your little FPV camera in there if you so choose to desire. Mine does not have an FPV camera. So mine doesn't have this little FPV swivel here. But you can see you can point that forward or down, okay? Now, of course, I don't care about that because I don't do FPV, but I have equipment to do it and we just can't share it on the channel. So it doesn't really add anything to what we bring here on this channel. For that reason, you won't see me do a lot of it, okay? Canopy comes off. Yes, you can see through it, but you're not gonna FPV through this. It's very dark, okay? This one could come off if you wanted, but I believe it's glued on. You'll have to yank it off. Here is your XT30. Very basic installation of your battery and you're ready to rock and roll. Once you get the transmitter out. Now this is the third VTOL that we've done in a similar configuration. And so we're super excited because this has been a really good product every time we've done it. And so Yu Jang feels like a pretty good controller. Okay, we've got a 3D 6G. It's a momentary push button, that's kind of interesting. M mode, G6 mode, and V mode. So vertical mode, now this is one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to take off and have it go right. You want it to take off like this. So we are going to double check in the manual as I check for batteries. Uh, there are four double A's, look at that, amazing. So we're going to put four double A's in, just like you guys have always seen on just about every transmitter that uses double A's. And you guys notice a lot of times these things run on six volts, and that's because these are three 1.5 volt cells in series. Okay, and this is a nicer transmitter because you can actually pull these off and change the tension on your sticks and all sorts of things. So let's turn this on real quick and just give you a quick rundown on how it looks. Turning it on. Okay, so it's on. We've got all the way up, all the way down, arms it. It's a mode two, it says. If you hit mode, that's not gonna change the mode two. Okay, so this is gives you a percentage call out from where you are, pretty cool. And then you've got a left, right, and see it just highlights whatever channel you're moving. The last channel shows on there, which is pretty cool. And then there's a button here for like camera, it's a function button, okay? The function button is going to activate there is one extra output in there, and if you look carefully, there's a plug on it, and I don't know what that one says, but I'm guessing that that one looks like an SRLX, maybe? I'm not sure. Can you zoom in, please? Right there. Sorry, we're trying to get you guys a shot without opening it up. There it is, guys. So four pins, okay, and small, okay? So that function will do something. I don't know what it is. And then there's high, low, so you see how it says 80%? Now it says 100% over here, that's super convenient. 80%, 100%, 80%, 100%. Lock or unlock, I don't know if it's like actually doing it or not. So full throttle, now I'm going over this way, that's zero. Oh, it's saying channel four is zero. So there's your rudder. Nope, that's throttle. Huh, kind of hard to see. 
Press and hold the mode button. Nothing seems to happen with that. These, oh, mode. Okay, so you can hear the beep. There's another beep. And then there's nothing on these buttons. They're plugs, okay? All right, so that gives us a starting point. So I'm gonna turn this off. There is a uh, red and blue light like a police car. Okay, what does this say about the modes? Up here. Multi-rotor flight, airplane flight, and vertical flight. So you wanna start in multi-rotor flight, and then they have airplane flight and vertical flight. So don't start in vertical mode. It will not start in vertical mode is my expectation. You wanna start in M mode. Show them on the thing. M mode. That's multi-rotor mode. Now I have flown mine inside, but just, you know, I usually like to vet these items before I fly them in my kitchen if they're big enough to damage the kitchen. Both of these are charged. Let's show them. Okay, so as you can see, we've got channel two is, it says it's done, but then what that means is it's just balancing. So it's, it's done. And you can always hear on these smart chargers. Now the other one, channel one is also done. And you, can, you hear that noise? When the cooling fan comes on and they're both green, when the cooling fan comes on, that's blowing to keep its internals cool because it's dissipating. It's actually discharging, it's getting hot. And that is what happens when both of these are done, okay? So my first thing I wanna do is disconnect the battery, then disconnect this. Now, when you do it this way, be extra careful so that you don't end up creating a short if you go that route, okay? These are just motor contacts that I took years ago, probably when I had an XT30 pack because it's kind of a weird connector and I just used it and built myself an adapter. Okay, so that one's good to go. We can plug it in and verify, but we got good lighting outside, so we're gonna jump outside and fly this thing right now for you. So guys, as usual, our unbox build radio setup is going to actually be at the end of the video. So if you guys wanna help support Brian Phillips RC, the best thing you can do is buy things from the links in our video description below. It's been just a little bit of confusion at a few of the sites. So if you wanna let us know what you bought, put it in the comments, it'll help us to keep track of things. Uh, but just wanna let you guys know the best way to support Brian Phillips RC is by buying items because it helps us to build relationships with vendors that sell products that you want, like this VTOL. Or maybe this VTOL was terrible and the flight was horrible and we don't really want it anyway. But the point is we show the positives, the negatives, and we try to give you guys an idea of where we think it would fit. And we hope you guys see that when you watch our footage. We try very hard to bring you good consistent footage and a lot of it, okay? So these are done. This one's still going. This is the factory one. I'm going to unplug. And just to give you an idea, we have been filming for just a very short time, folks. Yeah, that's at 87%. So just to give you an idea, the charger will work. Oh, 87% stands for how many volts, though? It was like 4.0. Yeah, we started at 3.94, mm -hmm. 3.9. Okay, so this one's going to keep going for a little bit longer. And I'm just going to tell you, you're going to want multiple batteries. So when you buy this, there may be an option for you know, one battery, two batteries, or three batteries, maybe even more. Get as many as you can because the batteries that come with this thing are cheap when you order it with the plane, okay? Mm -hmm. Or with a VTOL, whatever you wanna call this thing. Okay, so also the arming on this is down and out probably like every other one. Ooh, just why don't you go over those buttons and just read them out loud for a minute. Okay, so you have the multi-rotor, airplane and vertical flight. Um, this says 3D 6G mode conversion. I know you said it's a momentary push button, but we'll have to see how that actually oh, works. Oh, it just switches in between the two modes. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have high low. One click unlocking is that bottom button. Okay. So I wonder if you're going to need that to, to arm it. Arm it. Okay. Simultaneously press 3D6G key and unlock key to power supply emergency shutdown. Oh. Unlock and 3D6G to power shutdown emergency. That's really dumb that they You're made that accommodation. You're not gonna remember that when- Yeah, why would you assume that's that? That's a problem. Okay, whatever, we, we'll forgive them because I wanna fly this thing. Okay, so now, the other thing is, I don't know if I wanna put a voltage alarm on this because I'm not sure where it needs to alarm. So let's go ahead and get it out and fly it, guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside and do like what we always do, which is starting with our main flight. Like I said, the easiest way to support us is to buy these amazing products when you like them. But if you don't like them, don't buy them. We've done so many different reviews that there's surely something that you will love 
if you just watch, watch the video. And if you're trying to find something, you can't find it, go over to brianfeldsrc.com and we'll redirect you back to the YouTube video so you can see what you wanna see and it's sorted by type, by brand, whether that be um, you know, like a website, a distributor, or manufacturer, we'll help you find what you want because we have so many videos, like thousands of them, okay? And I'm not exaggerating, there's literally thousands of videos. And so hopefully we can answer your question right now. Now, if you get to that and you say, you know what, this was a video from like six years ago, you weren't even hardly a pilot at the time, and we didn't answer our questions, leave the questions in the comments. We still get the comments on the older videos. And I do try to get to them, but if you really want the best shot at communicating with us, Patreon is a great way to do that. That also helps us support us financially with monthly supports from you. Also, we have super thanks, which are on YouTube and YouTube memberships as well. And then finally, we have PayPal if you wanna do one-time donations, but we really think the best route is to just buy these things from the links. You'll support us. And if you can help us out in the meantime, just let us know what you bought, when you bought it, in the comments below and then we can help kind of keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, that's gonna be a good little tool for us to put in our back pocket because we've had some turmoil on certain vendors. But anyway, more about that in the future. And we appreciate you guys watching. We try to keep them compressed, but to the point and also give you guys a lot of value in these videos. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button on your way out and click the bell for notifications when you subscribe to our channel. We have new stuff coming out sometimes five times a week Usually twice though, usually something in the first part of the week and something in the second part of the week. And every once in a while we'll do a ground vehicle in the middle or a helicopter and e-bike, something like that on a Sunday or Sunday evening, something like that to kind of wet your whistle before we get into it for the full week. But all we need from you guys is just to watch these videos, smash the like button and buy stuff when you do like it. We never want you to buy stuff you don't like to try to support us because if you're gonna do that, just wait till you see something you do like. And if you see something maybe you've got a different take on and you wanna leave some comments about it, do it down below, we'll see them. And even if we don't reply to them, we'll be reading them. So we really appreciate you guys, world's best audience here on YouTube at Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching, stay tuned.